everyone. Welcome back. It is 2023 and we are on to do some more success. Well, today's theme is actually skills for success with Employment and Social Development Canada's skills for success tools. And I was thinking, gosh, this should be a black background because normally thematically I would put a black background for different topics that relate to thinking and learning about adult education. Well, this one, I kept thinking, gee whiz, you know, is is this is this food science or is this adult education? Well, it's a little bit of both. Skills for Success was developed by ESDC as a platform for understanding those foundational skills that help you transfer into any career. And ESDC has uh, prior iterations of this. It used to be called the Essential Employability Skills. So don't be surprised if I slip up and say, oh, and this is another Essential Employability. Oh, no, as, and now as Skills for Success. But the um, main thing is these are skills that are going to be helping you be successful in any workplace, any environment. And so at the end of this video, I want you to be able to describe the different ESDC skills for success and identify how you might apply different skills for success in your career. I want you to reflect on skills for success that you may want to strengthen for your career and identify additional tools from ESDC for learning about the skills for success. So let's just jump in and uh, do a little bit of an exploration here. The skills for success model, I, I got to sit in some of the stakeholder meetings in Ottawa. It was developed by Employment and Social Development Canada, and this is Canada's a federal ministry that focuses on employment. And so they look at all the different dynamics of the labor market and education in Canada and help to define what is really important from a policy and a, a program perspective. And this is one of the important programs that they want to introduce in the education system, thinking about what these skills are. And we jokingly called it the pineapple pizza model because they didn't want it to be a box. They didn't want it to be a line. They wanted to talk about the fact that all of these different skills are interconnected. And so in a moment, I'm going to break out each of these different skills, but think about the fact that they're all interconnected. And uh, we'll reflect on that in, in a minute here. But uh, it was developed by Employment and Social Development Canada. And again, they are the ministry that focuses on standard of living, quality of life, and labor force to make sure that our labor force is well-skilled and able to perform the productivity that our Canadian um, economy needs. And they also do a lot of the work on efficient and inclusivity uh, within the labor market. So there's all sorts of great resources. And I encourage you, if uh, understanding labor market is something interesting, they've got all sorts of amazing different tools and resources. Let's jump into some of these different skills and walk through Adaptability. I love this graphic because they turned a person into a Swiss Army knife. And a Swiss Army knife just is one of those tools that can automatically, one moment it's a knife and it's a saw, it's a corkscrew, it's a, it's a screwdriver. The idea behind adaptability is that we know the work environment is going to be constantly changing. How do we help people so that they can be able to adapt and um, be flexible, be persevering, uh, be able to manage the fact that all this change is going to be happening all the time. It's it's often frustrating. And how can people deal with that frustration when things start to change? And for some of the higher level uh, learning taxonomies, we may be looking at how do you change, how do you create change in your organization? How do you lead those change initiatives? How do you organize with that? That's something that I do in my in my. Uh, food innovation program is that we actually talk about different change management models and we talk about what it's like to be leading change. If you have to be the person who goes in and says, yep, our, our company is going to swift, uh, switch uh, tactics and now make different products, how do you help manage that expectation? So adaptability is the first of the skills for success. The next one's collaboration. And this one is all about, of course, working in teams. And any teacher knows that we're always going to be out there assigning teamwork, but there's reasons for that. Part of it is about learning about how to work in culturally diverse or gender diverse or linguistically diverse teams. At, here at Niagara College, we have students from around the world. And so in many cases, our students are not English as a first language. And it's it's important both for English speaking students as well as our 
international students to get used to working with each other and be able to appreciate the the diversity and the value that that brings to the team. Um, we also look at collaboration from a partnership perspective. How do we, first off, work on collaboration in our teams, but then in many cases, we need to be able to think, what are some of those strategic partners? Do In food science, we may be building collaborations with um, suppliers. We may be building partnerships with uh, sector organizations. What are those collaborations and partnerships that are going to help our organization succeed? This is an important skill. And again, it's something that we need to teach and we need to learn and we need to practice. Communication, no surprise. This is all about effectively sharing information, ideas, and skills with each other. And it's also about using the tools of communication. So things like, are you able to use emails or text or <laughs> those of you who are at Niagara College, being able to use your Blackboard effectively? How can you use it professionally as well? So it's not just, can I, can I send a a text message to my instructor, but can I use it professionally and in a way that's meaningful and going to build up relationships and collaboration? So communication, no surprise. Oh, no, uh, no surprise on this one either. And it's also likely one of my favorites. How, how can we use creativity and innovation as an essential skill? This is where we're thinking about new opportunities and uh, Imagining the impossible and making it possible. How do we create meaning in our ideas so that whatever we are creating, the recipient of that of that creation is going to say, this is meaningful to me and I value it. Also, it's about creating uniqueness. And how do we know that the idea that we're coming up with is not just copying someone else's idea, but that it is truly unique and therefore is also going to create value within the within our, rec our recipient community. These are learned skills and we ha have all sorts of different toolkits that we do in our program, all sorts of different resources that we are applying to be able to help facilitate creativity and innovation. Digital is another one and this is where we need today's citizens to be able to use and navigate the digital environment. So when, I, when you see this little laptop computer in the image, it doesn't mean that we all want you to be computer programmers, but at minimum, we want you to be able to navigate and use different digital technologies. We want you to be able to eventually apply different digital technologies. And in some programs, yeah, you may be actually designing digital technologies or engineering new systems, but most of, I'd say most of us, we just need to be able to navigate and use and apply we also, within the digital environment, this one's a slightly different learning taxonomy. If you've if you followed my other videos that talk about learning taxonomy, you will see different qualities of words here. Evaluating. This one's a higher complexity, but we want more people to be able to evaluate the quality of information in that digital environment. So not just every spam message and every random blog post out there, but to be able to go in and say, I can find quality information and be able to find what's meaningful in the digital space to be able to use it to inform my decisions and inform my problem solving. We are starting to also see the barriers to entry for creating digital content becoming easier and easier. Uh, if you asked me five years ago how to make YouTube videos, I would have gone, oh my gosh. And bit by bit, this is a skill that I've had to practice. I didn't learn how to do this at school, but I've learned how to do it because I felt it was important. And now I'm mirroring to my students, how do you create digital content so that it's meaningful and is able to share messages with, with different stakeholders? Numeracy, no surprise. Using numbers, using math, using statistics, using different mathematical tools to be able to inform decisions, to help with problem solving, to be able to um, help measure the world. A lot of, uh, we're going to talk in a minute about how all of these different skill sets are connected to each other. But honestly, um, math and numeracy skills are essential in virtually every workforce. I work in a, in a, 
food studies department and we have a lot of culinary students who want to learn how to cook. And they often come to me and say, oh, I got into cooking because I don't want to do math. And I'm like, oh, cooking is math. There's so many measurements. There's so many different calculations that you need to be able to do. And they're like, oh, no, 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 I don't, I, I don't want to do math. And I'm like, oh, everyone needs to do math in some foundational way. It's up to the education community to help figure out what is the appropriate rigor and relevance for the mathematics. So, for example, in my program, we use a lot of engineering tools and a lot of different spreadsheets that have been developed by uh, higher uh, professors and uh, scientists and engineers. And we apply them in meaningful ways so that even our first year students are able to do uh, complex mathematics. And then as we as we mature in our understanding of the systems, then we break down more of the base mathematics. But we're able to use numbers very quickly and in, in a meaningful way. Problem solving. Yay, I love this one. Um, this is one of those skills where we are teaching about how do we go and observe a problem in our society or in our community or our organization, and then be able to design experiments or design ways of finding new ways of doing stuff and then measuring it and then being able to say, did the, did this change make an improvement or did this change make any change at all? These plan, do, study, acts, yes, it, it could be about the formal experimental design process, but I, I, I love PDSA because it's so simple. At the, same, at the same time, it can be used for extremely complex problems. Problem solving is also about continuous improvement. And um, my students know this is a topic I love. It's a topic that they study with me in the third year course. But how do we go about and we see that problem and we see that opportunity to improve something and to be able to then create solutions in a meaningful way and apply those solutions. A lot of that's communications and change management as well. Reading, no surprise that we have to be able to interpret the written materials in, in our world. We've got to be able to learn new skills and be able to read to inform our decisions. We've got to also have some of those aspects of collaboration and cultural literacy in there as well, that oftentimes we're reading in English, we're, we're, we're thinking in that space, but the world doesn't just communicate in that way. What are some of those digital tools that we could be applying so that we can read in other languages or read with better understanding. Reading, I can't stress this enough. I know here I am making a video instead of giving you a text to read, but um, there's so many opportunities that come from reading and reading across the discipline, but also reading into other disciplines to learn from other areas of study can also help inform your innovation practice. And so the being able to read effectively and read with meaning is a really important skill for success. Last but not least, writing. Being able to communicate effectively through writing. It's also using some of those digital tools to be able to write effectively and transmit those ideas. Writing is about transmitting ideas and teaching skills, but it's also about persuading and creating change. Oftentimes, we are asking our students to write grant proposals or write um write different pitch documents to be able to persuade investors that my idea is a great one. You should give me some money. It could be a writing a business plan. Writing is a really, really important skill. Inevitably, a lot of our students in the food technology program end up in uh, quality control or food safety roles, and they're going to be writing systems and procedures for their organizations. And again, being able to effectively communicate so that you're minimizing the chance for error that's a really important skill set. Now, I jump back to this slide again, and I like to think about the fact that all of these are diff they're inter uh, they're interrelated. So, for example, writing and reading those are quite obvious. You need to be able to read what you're writing and make sure that other people are going to read it and get the same sense of meaning. You may be applying digital skills when you're writing using all sorts of different software platforms. Maybe you're writing something, but you're collaborating with someone. And so you're using perhaps a digital skill like SharePoint or OneNote to be able to do projects in a collaborative space. Maybe you're writing or collaborating in innovation or problem solving. And 
Therefore, you need to be able to measure stuff and use numbers to be able to justify your decisions. Justifying decisions is communicating, but maybe those decisions make you have to adapt. Oh my gosh, they are all interacting with each other. Now, oftentimes I have this conversation and people say, well, these are complex and these are skills for employment, but I would, I would argue that these are skills that can be taught at any stage of the of the education system. I can teach children in kindergarten how to be creative. I can teach them how to do problem solving. Reading, we have to we have to apply the right rigor and relevance to say this is an appropriate level of development for the student at this point. And that is also in adult education. We need to think about who our archetypal students are coming into our programs and make sure that we are challenging people with the right baseline and challenging people with enough challenge to grow this skill. Now, I'm going to, I always joke that we are friends and I don't edit these transitions out, but I'm going to jump to ESDC's web page for the Skills for Success. I just went to, I googled ESDC Skills for Success and this was the web page that came up. Um, they have a web page and they've got all sorts of different tools available to you. So you can jump into here and learn about the different skills and go through each of these different skills with your, uh, with, with your time and context in mind. They have different videos on each of the different skills, talking about them in work and life. Something that's also fun if you've got the time is to jump in and do some of these skills assessments. And you can jump in and there's little quizzes that you can do to learn about your skills. They have some different adaptations as well so that uh, members of the First Nations Inuit and Métis community, as well as people who care about this community's success, are able to jump in and try some of the different tools that have been developed with uh, a cultural lens in mind. There's all sorts of different self-assessments. So you can do writing self-assessment, reading self-assessment, numeracy self-assessments. You can go through and see, are there different skills that you might want to be enhancing and be able to go in and reflect more on those skills so that you are polishing the skills for your success. Jumping back here as I wrap up my presentation, I always say to my students, take time to reflect on what you're awesome at and think about your strengths. And so, for example, I like to think that I'm a very creative and innovative person and someone who really enjoys problem solving and has applied it at, a, at an expert level across a wide number of organizations. But I have to take time and also step outside of my ego. Your ego is that, that part of your... Uh, emotions that says, yeah, I'm awesome. I'm cool. I'm great. And be able to step outside of it and say, oh, what, what could I be better at? Maybe I, I could be better at digital. That, there's a reason I'm doing this YouTube channel for you is that it's part of my journey to be able to learn more digital skills, to be able to do better teaching and learning for my students. And so step outside of yourself and, and say, what could I do better do I need to practice my math? I'm actually doing some math courses right now because I have a teenage, uh, I have a teenage kid at my house who is taking some advanced math courses, and it's been 25 years since I took high school math, and so I need to polish my numeracy skills because it's been a while since I've used them. What are those skills that I, as a learner, need to practice and need to polish and to be honest about it because? Just sitting there and saying, oh yeah, I'm, on, I'm awesome at everything, doesn't help you grow. Being able to step back and say, yeah, this is something I need to learn, allows you to go back into that growth mindset. And so take that time, I'll let it be a personal reflection, but take that time to think, what, what are those skills that I can learn to make me more successful for the workplace? Awesome. I'm going to wrap it up here, but you always know my mantra if you have any questions, reach out to me. I love to have more conversations and to communicate and collaborate in the digital space. I love reading your questions and writing back to you so that we can be creative and solve lots of problems. All sorts of different things that we can do together when we collaborate. So I wish you lots of success and we'll talk to you again real soon. Take care.